I'm Rochelle Coleman. Basketball is taking me all over the world, and I'm in the DC spotlight. So I was born in DC, raised in Maryland, but I was first introduced to the sport that would take me around the country, around the world, at Miss Evans' house in DC when I was like three or four years old. I think it's always been something I've been attracted to. It's the first thing I had ownership of. Like you're expected to have good grades, you're expected to do all these things by your parents, but basketball was the first thing that I didn't have to be good at, I didn't have to work at it, but I wanted to. And it made me want to do it more because it was mine and mine alone. I just always did it from when I was little, from when I was a five, I always played on teams. We moved, I just always played. It's the thing I played at recess, it's the thing I did after school, it's the thing I did at home. I watched it like, I had, it was just always there. If you went into my room when I was a kid, my wall was floor to ceiling, just basketball posters. So I don't think I thought of it as this is gonna take me somewhere. It's just my favorite thing. So it was always around, always present. I don't think I ever had an inkling that it was gonna be present from like childhood through adulthood. It's just, I never left it alone. It's something I did when I was five, playing in rec leagues. It's what I did at daycare. It's what I did after school. It's what I, it was just, I guess, almost like an obsession, excuse me. Um, it was my, in my room, floor to ceiling, I had posters, basketball. If I ordered magazines, it was basketball. Like it was always there, something I wanted to do. Um, so I guess I just never let go of that obsession. I first started playing basketball organized when I was five, six in Montgomery County Rec Leagues. Um, and then when I was 11, I played on my first AAU team, and that's the first time I started traveling with basketball for like local tournaments and then um, AAU nationals. I didn't think I would go anywhere with basketball probably until my sophomore or junior year of high school. Up until that point, it was always something fun to do. But by my sophomore year, I started getting letters in the mail of, about college, something that I've always watched on TV, like you watch the women's basketball tournament on television. And once I started getting letters like, oh, this is a thing, this is something I could do beyond high school. But before that, I just played because it was fun. Like I still play now just because it's fun. So once I was playing on my AAU team and I was on a really good AAU team, we were like nationally ranked. Um, if you go back and look at my team, are starting there's like 10 of us that played division one basketball but um for me it was going to high school getting to be like the the main person on the team learning that i can go somewhere so i learned that i could use basketball to take me places i was going to be going anywhere so i was going to college when i graduated high school but because of basketball i got to choose wherever i wanted to go because um, i had schools recruiting me so I wasn't limited to staying to a state school. I could say, oh, if this school in Ohio likes me and they're offering me a scholarship, I can go there as I'm going to school anyway. So after high school, I played at Syracuse University. Uh, I played four years varsity women's basketball player. Um, after Syracuse, I was a grad graduate assistant coach for Slippery Rock University. It's a division two school in Pennsylvania. Um, but while I was still at Slippery Rock, I still had the itch to play, so I, the year after I graduated from grad school was trying to get overseas with agents and it wasn't happening. So I ended up representing myself and playing professional basketball in Holland. So basketball from probably age 11 through 26 kind of dictated my schedule, dictated when I was available to hang out with friends, it kind of like ran my life. And then after I finished playing pro ball, I decided, you know what, basketball is not gonna drive everything I do. I wanna try other things. So I went home and I started training. I ended up starting my own uh, training company. So I was doing basketball training, personal training, running camps, clinics, one-on-one. -on -one. But basketball was something, it went back to just being something fun to do and that's something that I had to do. So where I was in my life, I've never been a person to say, um, like some people grow up like, I wanna be a doctor, I wanna be a lawyer. I never had that. I just knew always what I'd like to do and what I didn't wanna do. I, for since a young age, I never wanted to work in a cubicle. I wanted to, you know, be casual and what I could do for work, but I always had a love for teaching and traveling. So as I got older and I started to have to figure out, well, what are you going to be when you grow up? I started to just go in pockets where I could say, well, where can I travel? What do I have free time to go see the world? And where can I teach? So when I was first working as a trainer for another company, 
I realized I could do this on my own. Like I don't need to work for somebody and they're taking part of my check. I can do this by myself. So that's what led me to start my own business. And also from moving overseas and getting myself overseas professionally had a lot of confidence. Like if I can get myself to play in another country and get paid for it without the assistance of an agent, I can start a business. So growing up, education was first and foremost, first and foremost in my house. Um, I don't even know which generation I am of going to college, but my mom, dad went to college, my grandma went to college, my great, like it's what you do in our family. So when it came to basketball, basketball was just something extra. It was fun, that was my thing. As I got older, I discovered, well, if I'm going to go to college, let me have a say in where I wanna go. And basketball allowed me to go to school for free and pick and choose where I wanted to go. Um, I wasn't dependent on if I had to get a student loan or I wasn't dependent on if my parents could pay for it because basketball allowed me to say, hey, I wanna go to this school because they want my talents and I'm gonna go take advantage of it. So I have an undergraduate degree from Syracuse University, and then I have a master's degree from Slippery Rock University. So as basketball wasn't a uh, paying for an education or paying for a livelihood, it just became fun again like I was a kid. I started to have friends, basketball is a small world, and I had friends that were having basketball clinics overseas in Israel or just doing different um, teaching with basketball and I teach basketball I was I've been running working camp since I was 18 so I figure if I can teach someone how to dribble in America I can figure out teach someone how to dribble in Israel so I started helping out friends and traveling overseas just to teach basketball uh, which is cool because unlike normal tourist destinations you kind of get more with the locals and you can really see what a country is about and what a community is about through the basketball lens so the, the first time I used basketball to get overseas, um, after I graduated from Syracuse and I was in uh, grad school, I had friends that were playing professional ball overseas. And I thought, you know, I can do that. Like, I have the skill set to go play overseas. So for a year after I graduated, I was trying to find an agent to help me get over because that's typically the path. You find an agent, agent hooks you up with a team, and then you go over and play. But for a year, I couldn't find an agent that would either go all the way to help me overseas or they would just drop off the face of the earth. So I got kind of annoyed with it and I started to make plans to get myself over. So I, I made videos, I took videos from my college games, I started playing on the semi-professional team in Delaware, driving up there two, three times a week so I can gather more stats, some film, and then there's a website called Eurobasket where I emailed every single Europe, European team, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, a quick email. Hi, my name's Rochelle, I played at Syracuse, I'm out playing on the semi-pro team, here's some highlights of me playing. I'm a one-two guard, here are my stats. And after some time, I started getting some hits back from some teams in England and Holland, um, a couple other places, and getting into conversations with some of the upper management, and I ended up going to a team in, uh, in Holland to play professionally from that, from that work. So I took it to a, a new level after I stopped playing, once I started my training company, because I had friends who were doing, like they had real jobs now, quote unquote real jobs. So I had a friend who was running basketball clinics in Israel. I had friends who had their own um, sports youth development company that had a connection to the, to the State Department through their sports diplomacy program. So they were having exchange groups with different uh, youth groups from around the world. So once I got connected with them, I was going to Israel to run basketball clinics. I was working with kids that were coming from like the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo or Peru that I could run basketball clinics with here. So because of my, um, I guess, teaching experience and training experience and just having friends who were different arenas, I was able to keep, stay in the world of basketball, teaching different youth from across the world how to play. So I used my experience, my education, and when an opportunity came up with a peace building organization, Peace, Build, peace Players International, that was using sport to bring together youth in areas of conflict, um, like I jumped at the opportunity. An opportunity to use my basketball skills, to use my experience of going around the world to work with youth and other adults who were on the ground trying to make a difference in their community by bringing together groups that don't normally interact, whether it's for political reasons, religious reasons, um, just socioeconomic reasons, all the reasons that, can, that create conflict in communities, uh, I was able to join this uh, organization and try to help their mission in making a more peaceful society.
So Peace Players International uses basketball to bring to unite communities. Um, it's been around since 2001. They operate in South Africa, Cyprus, Northern Ireland, uh, the Middle East, and America. Um, my, for my part, I work in the U.S. I help support L.A., Chicago, and Detroit and also work on coaches trainings. But I've been fortunate enough to be one of the few people in the organizations to see how Peace Players operates in all of the, I've been to all the sites. So even though the conflicts are different, um, if we're in Northern Ireland and we're bringing together, is, um, excuse me, if we're in Northern Ireland, we're bringing together Catholics and Protestants and hearing about that conflict and the history of that, of that country and then hearing how basketball is bringing you together and providing leadership skills for them and providing a safe space for them to come together and realize, hey, I can see the humanity in you, I see people as people and we can move forward as a, a single group. I've seen that happen in South Africa, I've seen it in Chicago, like all these different pockets where people may grow up thinking, hey, I'm different from this other person and so I have to be against them. And by introducing basketball as like the, the hook to get them to come together and then teaching them all these other uh, leadership skills and peace building skills and conflict resolution skills that they start to see hey we are one and the same so it's cool to be part of an organization that is taking this large almost pie in the sky we're gonna bring this uh, peace to the world thought and actually see it with the youth that are in the program and the coaches and the staff that are part of our organization so looking back in my life there's there's moments where like I was in Tibet in May and I'm looking out at the sun setting over these mountains and these plains and I go, the only reason I'm here is because I learned how to dribble when I was five. Or when I'm in Turkey in the mountains and I'm looking out and I'm hanging out with Syrians and Turkish people and I'm like, the only reason I'm here is because of basketball. And that's happened so many times where I meet these wonderful people from across the land because I decided I, well, I, decided I was gonna play ball and I've just always kind of just followed the bounce of it. And I know that's not, that'll continue to happen. I will continue to follow, follow the bounce in the past of this basketball world I live in because it's provided so many opportunities and taken me to so many places I've never thought. Like I've seen the Nile River. I would have never thought I would have seen the Nile. I've been to four different continents because of basketball. I have, if I go on my phone, there's people from Sweden, Uganda, Turkey, Israel, South Africa, all these countries in my phone just because I play ball. And not that many people can say that. Um, I, I know there's usually one thing in people's life that helps drive them and helps them figure out like, how do I find my voice? How do I speak up for myself? How do I uh, like discover your passion? And I was lucky enough to find that as a kid and I haven't let go of that. And as long as basketball is still fun and it connects me to good people, I will continue to stick with I'm Rochelle Coleman and I'm in the DC Spotlight.